The crypto winter is finally over, and even the co-founder of Cardano said it, he's looking for the end of crypto winter. Well, let me tell you, the end we have already found. And fun fact, today marks the day that two years ago, Bitcoin hit an all-time high at $69,000. It's been two years. And we all know the massive wave that's ongoing right now, the institutional adoption wave. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, take a look at this article right here. Institutions rush for Bitcoin as the CME group flips Binance for Bitcoin futures contracts, meaning the institutions that are trading through the CME group are now doing so more heavily than through Binance for Bitcoin futures, which basically means things are starting to get crazy. As you can see right here, open interest 110,000 Bitcoin and the volume is also significantly higher, but that would mark a pretty good reason as to why Bitcoin is doing so good right now, why it keeps getting more and more momentum because the institutions are that interested. Let's actually refresh because I believe Oh, Ethereum is moving a lot then. Ethereum last time I checked, here we go. I want to say Ethereum last time I checked was above 2100. Again, similarly, due to institutional interest for the most part, Ethereum soars to a seven month high amid BlackRock ETF approval. Ethereum stole the spotlight from Bitcoin after BlackRock laid the groundwork to list an Ethereum exchange traded fund, ETF. Because again, they registered their iShares Ethereum Trust over in Delaware. And I confirmed it over on Twitter yesterday as well. Send Ethereum because BlackRock's ETF uh, was actually confirmed in the NASDAQ filing rather than just them registering. You know, the filing is a little bit of a separate thing, but it happened and it's massive. Then again, I want you guys to realize that the space is still very small. A lot of good stuff is coming up, certainly, but it's still very small. They often talk about all this dark side of finance in the traditional financial space that encompasses tons of money. And I tells you, crypto really does not have that much of a dark side. People often like to say that a lot of money laundering and things like that are going on. But generally speaking, the percentage is pretty low. And relatively, the amount of money is pretty low if you compare it to TradFi. Now, I do believe, though, that at some point, if all these institutions are coming in as hot as we are seeing, that indeed a lot of shadier money is also eventually going to flow in, which ultimately is pretty good. They sometimes want to portray crypto as being that dark side. I don't think so. I think crypto is the normal side. Because at the end of the day, it's more transparent than your traditional finance. You can see every single transaction. A company does something shady. You can follow the money's movement. Which is another reason why we just keep on buying. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. Rich Dad Poor Dad author issues a critical warning and keeps buying Bitcoin. The entrepreneur has warned his followers about the situation in the world getting worse, adding that he keeps buying Bitcoin because, well, what exactly else will you buy if you're not buying crypto? Save gold, silver, Bitcoin as leaders want war. I keep buying more gold, silver, and Bitcoin because our leaders want more war and poverty. Work hard, spend wisely, and save gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Our leaders don't care about you, so you please take care of you and the people you love. And my stance on that is, indeed, if you want money that's free from control, go for crypto. Because at the end of the day, they can never take it away from you, which is the most beautiful part of it all. You can move hundreds of millions of coins around the world, hundreds of millions of dollars, and nobody's going to be able to stop you. And again, I still believe that for the most part, that's what all these institutions are trying to come in hot right now. That's why they want on in. Ripple CEO comments on the Bitcoin ETF approval speculations. We all know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. The SEC is an entity that has definitely been doing a strange job, but ultimately they will not win. I keep telling you. Most institutions like Ripple are going to face pure victory. I mean, they've already faced multiple victories over the SEC, but it's just going to continue on. Ripple CEO said he would welcome the Supreme Court crypto fight with the SEC even though they already spent $150 million on defense, which is insane. And he basically said he'd love to see how that would go if the whole XRP battle uh, would take it another layer higher. And he said, we are in it until the end, but uh, settlement is actually not out of the talks. 
Last month, the SEC asked the judge to drop the parts of the litigation against the co-founder and CEO. The SEC may still appeal the judge's July decision more generally, though, to decide whether an asset is covered by its security rules. The SEC uses a very old, stupid rule. And in the midst of this, as they're fighting against Ripple, they're also fighting against Coinbase. They're actually fighting against many crypto companies at the exact same time. And talking about those lawsuits, Jeremy Hogan said this. Uh, he's a lawyer, very well known in the crypto community. By the way, if you're rooting for Ripple, throw a big kiss at Binance for their win last year in the Anderson v. Binance case, which really restricted the reach of U.S. security laws outside of the U.S. The case helps Ripple out a lot. Legal nerd stuff below. And all I want to say about it is many crypto companies right now are fighting. The institutions are coming in, and I still say it like this. The SEC is having a really tough persona to, I wouldn't necessarily say protect the people from this, but I would say because they know it's coming up and they want to make sure that people can't make money <laughs> and that they've got all the ropes in before the actual money is there. That's what we talked about many times, right? It just makes so much sense for the SEC to keep things vague to make sure their friends can join on in at these cheap prices before things pop off. But perhaps right now, the price movements that we're seeing is because it just can't be suppressed any longer. If you keep getting crazy after crazy after crazy announcement and the space is just growing at this massive of a rate, it just makes sense that some, or I'd rather say at some point, it just can't be stopped. Now, before we move on, I want to tell you guys that the gaming sector, the crypto gaming sector, is going to keep getting bigger every single year. And so the most important part is to look for launch pads, look for partners that will do it the best, that will launch the best games consistently. And as you guys know, in the previous run, I <laughs> talked about a lot of IDOs, talked about a lot of sales, because generally in the bull market, that's what you want to go for. And today got another little interesting piece you guys should check out. So a lot of you guys might not know, but I have a consistent partnership with CDFI because they just keep launching bangers, meaning they work on a project to get it out to the public, so to speak, and usually just as extremely well. I can't guarantee you anything, but I'm telling you, it is always worth looking into whatever they're launching, whatever they're working on, because in the past it's worked extremely well. And you'll notice this as we get deeper into the bull market that these guys know what they're doing. Just as a little example, right? Take a look at this. Cedify Fund was the place to go to when it came to crypto gaming launch back back in 2021 with an over 44x return per launch in 2021. I'm not joking when I say that these guys know what they're doing, but most importantly, that the opportunity is starting to open up again. It was gone for a while. Bear market times were not nice, but it is coming back. And I'd say that's why their token on its own is also doing pretty well right now. Because in this case here, to be able to invest in these early stage projects, which I think are the most profitable thing in crypto, for this pad specifically, you need their S fund token and stake it to be able to get access to these uh, launches. Yeah, and if you just take a look at how the previous ones that launched and that performed, not all of them did as well as it says right here. Let's be honest. I might have invested in nearly every single one of these. Tryhards didn't do that well, as it says right here. I think they're they're garbage, but a lot of others did exceedingly well, way better than expectation. And I think that this is going to repeat itself yet again. I think that from the bottom of my heart that these guys are going to launch a lot of bangers. Another important part here is that the way I know these guys, I believe they've got a 100% refund policy, meaning if something goes bad about the launch, and I think it's happened before, but don't quote me on that, that they pay everybody back because these guys are at the top of the game. Most pads don't do that. Most pads, when things hit the fan, it's, well, you bought in. No, these guys basically put their credibility on the line. So if something goes wrong, you get your money back. And I think this is a lot more for the people that have been watching my channel for a while now, because they understand the concept of these launches and they understand how important it is but if you're not familiar with them just quite yet just keep watching on the channel and you understand just how important this stuff is and how important it is to find the right partners and the right platforms that launch tokens because there's a very big difference in experience depending on who you choose but yeah and to be a little bit more specific about the process i'll probably show you when i'm actually joining one of these launches how to exactly go about it even though i've already shown you guys a thousand times in the past though and exactly how much you get to invest per time also changes but just know i'm giving you a little introduction here because these guys are at the top of their game and their token is doing extremely well so i think a lot of people are looking it up right now but that's also because a lot of people are investing now or getting involved now for the future because these guys are at the top of the top when it comes to crypto gaming just look it up for yourself if you don't trust my words not a financial advisor but i do know my way around these sales so take a look at them just check it out for yourself i guarantee 
you won't regret looking more into these platforms. But it will tells you this. I personally think if you're buying crypto right now, it's the easiest 10x of a lifetime. That is any person buying it right now, if they don't 10x their money within another year or two, they've played the game wrong. Let's as a baseline say double their money because I think even if you buy Bitcoin, you're gonna 4X it. But if you really play the game bad, you might only double your money. It's still insane to think about that though. The fact that people starting out crazy, but I'm just saying people starting out with 10, no, let's say a hundred million dollars right now. It's a lot. I know, but people starting out with that are all going to become billionaires over the next year. It's just kind of hard to fathom people starting with a hundred thousand right now are going to be millionaires in a year or two from now. That's sometimes very strange to fathom that if you right now have got more money, that all of it is going to be 10 X. So the people that already had a ton of money are going to make so much more because it's not a wage, right? It's not, oh, everybody's going to get themselves $10,000. No, it's proportional. It's relative. If you're starting out with a little bit, you're going to make a ton, but still relatively a little bit to people who are already starting out with a ton. Money makes money. I know, I know. But in the crypto space, sometimes it's a lot more feasible and you start to really feel the numbers and start to understand just how crazy things can be in a year or two. And I keep telling you, don't miss out on this opportunity. I'm not a financial advisor, but don't miss out on the opportunity that is called crypto because it's just such an insane chance.